All right, so now here's one I hope everyone will like. Um, I have a custom toolbar uh, that was originally created by uh, my friend Lawrence and then updated by my friend Trucky and his friend uh, that will give us the ability to reset faders and pans either individually or as a group. All right, so let's go to the classroom. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the, uh, the Mac way to actually set it up on a Macintosh. And then I'll show you the PC way in a little video that really doesn't have a great microphone on my uh, other PC. But uh, it'll walk you through how that sets up as well. All right, so the first thing that we have to do is we have to download the files. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go to, let me do it this way, and there we go. Now we're gonna go to hst-homestudiotrainer.com, and this is the new updated HST Home Studio Trainer site. You're gonna go over here to more, and you're gonna look for free tools. So now, here we go. There is a bunch of different toolbars, including a link to my friend Truckee's Color Toolbar. This thing is amazing, but I got another video coming up for that soon. All right, so here is the HST Power Toolbar. So I'm just going to click on this right here, and this is going to download the file. Just like that, I am going to click on that, and it is going to open up the zip file here. Whoops, where is it? Where did it go? There it is, right up here. And I'm just going to minimize this web page. And I'm going to open up that, uh, that folder that it downloaded. And here are the two files. One is the actual macro page, and the other one is the package file for the fader resets. So let me go ahead and click on both of these and just drag them out to the desktop. There we go. And there they are. There's the two files. I'm going to put them over here. Excellent. All right, so now the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to the install of Studio One so that we can see the package contents. So I'm going to go here to the Finder, and I am going to go to Applications. And now I want to find Studio One. Here's Studio One Six. But you don't want to double click on it. You want to right click and you want to say show package contents. There we go. Then we have to click on the contents folder. Beautiful. And if we look carefully, we should see a folder called scripts. Perfect. I'm just going to double click on this so it opens in its own window. All right, you can see I have an old one here, and that's fan, uh, and that's fine. <laughs> I, I saw the word pans, and I said fans. All right, I'm going to right-click. I'm going to say move to trash. Done. Now, I am going to take the new package file, and I'm going to drag this in here. Remember, it has to be in the scripts folder. All right, there we go. It's in there now. Go back, contents, and then right here with all of the other applications. Studio One 6, I'm just gonna do this one more time. Right click, show package contents, scripts, and you drop it in there. Perfect. All right, let's close this up and let's open up Studio One. So now Studio One is going to open and scan all of the folders and it's going to find the scripts folder and it's going to bring in that package file into Studio One itself. And then all I have to do to test it is to now import the toolbar. I'm going to show you that in a second. And I'll go over here. Uh, it takes a little bit on my machine here. Don't have a lot of memory in this thing here. And I think we're almost there. And we're almost there. <laughs> Melodyne takes a while. I just rebooted the machine, so the boot up is a little bit slow. All right. All right. It 
taking longer than I anticipated. All right, so now Studio One is open. So we're going to go to New. And we're just going to use the... Ah, we'll use one of my templates, actually. HST New Song. Click OK. All right, so you can see I have the old toolbar right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say Remove Page. There we go, just like that. Let's see if I have any other copies of it. Nope, I don't. Okay, so now how do we bring in the actual toolbar? We're going to right-click on this little cogwheel right here, and we are going to choose Import. Now I can go to the desktop, and I can find the, the, uh, the macro page. Click on that. Click open and there you go. That's it. So now let's see if our let's see if our fader resets work. Uh, let's just double click here and we're going to do audio tracks. We're going to create eight audio tracks just like that and boom, boom. There we go. So you can reset all of your faders or you can just select any uh, one or more. And you can hit this side and you reset that one up and down. I can select just these and reset those up and down. So this is all and this is selected. Now for the pans. I'm going to go ahead and pan all of those to the left. And if I hit the pan reset for all, boom, just like that, all set. Okay, so that's how to do it on a Mac. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do it on a PC. All right, once we've actually downloaded the files, you can see we're on the PC now here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to place both of these files where they belong, especially this one. This one's the most important. So let's go ahead to our file explorer, and we're going to go to the, we're going to go to our C drive. And we're going to go to Program Files, and we're going to go to Personas, and we're going to go to Studio One Six, and what we're looking for is we're looking for the Scripts folder. So you can see I already have one here. So this is the old one. So if you have an old one, remove it. And we're going to take this and we're going to move it in here. Give it permission to move, and there we go. So that'll take care of the option for resetting the faders. Now all we have to do is open Studio 1.6. All right, now we're going to open up a song. And we're going to open up the, mic, uh, the macro toolbar. Now we go and right-click. We have to right-click on this little cogwheel. And then from here, we say import. Now we got to go to the desktop. Looks like we're already there. Click on the toolbar and click open and watch this up here. There it goes, and it has imported the toolbar. So let's see if the fader resets work. And open up the mixer. Let's see. Ready? Look at that. Perfect. And that's all it takes. It's just like the Mac. It's just that you have to get to the scripts folder in a little bit of a different way. All right, let's get back to the Mac. All right, so that actually worked out really well. So let's take a look at the other options in the toolbar here that I've created. It uh, took me a while to create some of these icons for it, and my friend Trucky helped me with a couple of them too. So you can see in the power toolbar, there is the fader and the pan resets. And I have new song. Let's see if I hold my mouse over it. Let's see here. Hold my mouse. We have new song. And then we have new project. And I used a hammer. <laughs> and then we have a save to a new folder. Those are the three real important uh, saves that you're going to need. All right, this is to open up the options like that. And then you have the save and save as and then close. 
And then I've got an overview. So if I had a bunch of events on all of these tracks, if I hit overview, it actually puts everything into whatever the window size is, the main arrange window. If I close the mixer and hit overview again, it expands it to the full size. All right, so now we have the record panel button here. I probably didn't need to put it there because there's one down here, but I put it there anyway. And uh, the record panel is for setting up your record modes and your punch in and out and that kind of thing. All right, and loop recording. All right, so then I have a transport. So I've got play and stop. And, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I hit play or if I have this here. I can actually just hit the return to zero. And then I have a forward and a rewind button. And also a record button, of course. But I don't have any tracks armed at the moment. All right, so this one is for markers. So if I go like this and I have the um, I have the cursor set up here, if I hit a marker, I can add a marker. So let's see. Actually, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to open up the marker track. There it is. So if I add a marker, it's going to let me name it. New one. Boom. There we go. We have a marker. If I want to eliminate a marker, I have to highlight it and use the minus button. Done. All right, so these two buttons, if you have multiple markers, you will actually be able to page through, forward or backward through the markers. I also have a nice little loop, um, start and end marker option. So if you would like the, you can see here you have the start marker, but the end marker is all the way over here at the five minute mark. So you can change the length of the song before you actually start recording or all you have to do is choose the longest event in your song and hit the marker button, and it actually brings the start and end markers right to where you selected. If you have a larger event, hit it again, and you can see that it will adapt. Perfect. All right, so then here I created some really simple buttons for export mix down for audio export stems and export video so for instance if i wanted to export a mix down like say in an mp3 if this song was done i would just hit export and it would open up the export mix down window if i did that with the stems it would actually ex uh, open up the export stems window and then of course for the video it would do the same thing but i don't have a video inserted but you guys get the general idea okay so now I do have something called auto gain stage. Some people like this, some people don't. And when I bring in a bunch of um, audio files for a song I have to mix, sometimes I'll go ahead and hit that button. So, you know, go ahead and give it a try. It gain stages everything at about minus 12, but go ahead and give it a try. You can also change the macro uh, if you want to by going ahead and recreating it. And I will actually be doing a video on how to create this macro and others uh, very soon. So uh, go ahead, give it a try if you download this toolbar. All right, and that is pretty much it. There are all of the functions of the Power Toolbar. I showed you how to install it on a PC. I showed you how to install it on a Mac. I hope you guys found that helpful, and I'll see you all in the next video.